So hi everybody and welcome to the uh, enterprise workflow with AppScript session. Um, so today we're going to see how you can use AppScript to automate your workflow and um, you know quickly add features to uh, basically the Google Docs suite um, and you know very simply um, you know access Google uh, Google products programmatically uh, using AppScript. So first, let's, let's just quickly present myself. Um, so my name is Nicolas Garnier. I'm a developer advocate at Google, and I joined in 2008. Um, I'm based out of Zurich, and so I focus on Google Apps APIs. Uh, my Twitter is at Nifco. Uh, now I'm, I'm a bit more active on Google+, uh, which you can access uh, using plus.nicolasgarnier, that's my name, .com. Uh, feel free to you know tweet, uh, even you know give feedback on the presentation or uh, make fun of me or just ask me any type of questions. Uh, that'd be nice. So first, uh, who in the room have ever heard of AppScript? Raise your hand. Wow. Okay. Good. <laughs> uh, and the rest, have you at least heard of Google Docs? Everybody. Yeah. Okay. So you know, hopefully, uh, seeing these AppScript demos, uh, you'll want to use. Uh, Google Docs uh, more and more and AppScript. So first, what is AppScript in general? So uh, AppScript is basically a JavaScript runtime uh, in the cloud. So we're going to execute your JavaScript code in the Google's cloud. It's not running on your web page. Uh, and it's going to have a really, really tight integration with Google services, uh, as you'll see in a minute in all the demos that we're going to do. Um, it comes with uh, basically, so since it's JavaScript syntax, the JavaScript syntax and base classes, you can do all the basic stuff you do with JavaScript. Since it doesn't run inside your web page, you don't have access, for example, to the DOM of the web page it currently runs in. Uh, so you'll see we provide different APIs for you to build user interface uh, using AppScript. It has uh, built-in access to various Google APIs, so you can very uh, quickly access, and very simply, uh, th that's the main point, very simply and quickly access Google APIs and, uh, and you know, interact with other uh, Google products. And it has also the ability to integrate third-party services, so you can you know, contact external, uh, external APIs or use external services inside AppScript. Uh, it comes also with an online editor, uh, just to make it more easy for you. Um, you just open a web page and start coding inside the browser. Uh, we'll see how it is. Uh, it's actually a quite fun and nice editor. So, and why did we build AppScript? So, uh, the base idea behind AppScript is uh, don't hate automate. So, uh, probably some of you have felt frustrated sometimes if you had to do super repetitive tasks. Some people have to send like 500 emails and. Uh, and you know, customize them, putting the name of the uh, of the customer. So that's a really you know, um, task, a really really boring task. So you could automate that kind of tasks with App Scripts. Also, you could feel frustrated by missing features. Uh, there's a missing feature inside Gmail that you don't have, uh, and perhaps with, using App Script, you can uh, create that feature uh, yourself, and you know, have a way to just have that automated. So basically, the the, the base point is, you know, don't hate your life, just automate it. <laughs> uh, yeah, sometimes it works. So um, where is AppScript? So basically, AppScript is, um, I mean, it used to run inside the spreadsheet. That was the main point, the main entry point where you could use AppScript. It was to, uh, the first versions of AppScript were only to, here to, like, automate a Google spreadsheet. So uh, basically, you know, you've all probably used uh, our... Uh, other existing technologies such as you know Microsoft Excel, uh, they have ways to like automate their spreadsheet uh, using macros, using VBA, etc. Um, the first versions of AppScript were very similar, just ways to automate uh, your Google spreadsheet. Um, nowadays, it's a bit more than that. Uh, you'll see it can an AppScript can live into a Google Sites, uh, can be a standalone app, uh, can also be run asynchronously in the background um, on the cloud, and you know update your spreadsheets or uh, other types of information uh, in the background. And who can use AppScript? Well, it's so simple as babies could use it. Uh, and even, you know, check babies. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> well, no, not so much, but like it's very simple. It's simple, you know, JavaScript, um, uh, uh, JavaScript syntax. Uh, we take care of all the author thank you, sorry, authorization for you. Uh, we take care of hosting and running the code. 
it's really simple. You just open Netter, start coding. Um, you know, if there is uh, authorization needed to access uh, other types of third part of, of data, like Google, you can access using AppSuite, for example, Google contacts data, uh, will take care of the authorization flow for you. Uh, so what is inside AppScript? So what can you do with it besides uh, basic JavaScript? So the first thing is you have uh, really easy access to, all, to a bunch of Google products. Uh, these are a bunch of APIs we support directly inside AppScript. Uh, for example, Google Spreadsheet, Google Translate, Google Finance, Gmail Sites, Doc Contacts Calendar, etc. We we are adding more and more, um, you know, as, as, you know, over time. Um, you can also access external services using uh, the URL fetch feature. We're going to see. You can even access OAuth protected resources using AppScript and the URL fetch service. Uh, you can access, you know, you have a JDBC connector uh, to access SQL database. Uh, you have SOAP. Uh, you have an XML parser just to allow you to access third party data. And uh, you can also, there's also a bunch of other services that we provide inside AppScript just to make it easy for you uh, to create a standalone application with AppScript. It's called the UI services. Uh, it's an API to basically build uh, your UI programmatically. Uh, there's also, it also comes with a WYSIWYG editor to you know, quickly and manually build a UI. Um, and uh, then you can also programmatically access the UI you've built and you know, inject data, inject charts, modify it. Uh, just to you know, give you a really quick entry point. And we launched um, a few months ago the Charts API, uh, which is you, I mean, we basically uses Google Charts, uh, and it's just a, a wrapper for AppScript around the Charts API. So it lets you quickly create charts as well. Um, so this is your first, I mean, the first AppScript function I'm going to show during this, uh, this talk. Uh, what can you notice? So. Nothing, right? OK. It's just, <laughs> it's just JavaScript. So that's the main point. This is a plain JavaScript function. Uh, you can use that function inside AppScript. Uh, you know, it doesn't access all that's not available in AppScript, which is you know, DOM and, and CSS, which when, when you run AppScript inside a web page. So this method here, uh, you know, it's very simple. It just converts inches to centimeters uh, you know, by multiplying the inches by 2.54. Uh, so let's just quickly try it. This is a spreadsheet uh, which has an app script uh, inside it that I've already done. So let me open the editor for you. Uh, so to open the app script editor, you just have to go to tools, uh, click on script editor, and here it is. That's the exact same method. I just copy pasted it. Uh, you can do the same. And now what you can do inside your spreadsheet is simply use that, so that function. So here I have a number, 10, and here what I do is a simple uh, spreadsheet formula. Um, so equal inches to centimeter uh, with the cell. So it's going to pass the value to the AppScript method. And here you go. You have your own custom method uh, inside AppScript. Uh, it was really easy. There's no you know, specific code, just, JavaScript, just plain JavaScript. So I want to try with another number. Here in front, you can pick a number. Well, that's easy. <laughs> so I'm just going to copy paste it. And here you go. See, very simple. All right, now let's do some, some cooler demos. Um, the first demo I want to show you is how to use third-party APIs. And um, so does everybody know Kevin Bacon? Who knows Kevin Bacon? Yes, oh, good. Now, for once, people know Kevin Bacon. I'm quite surprised. <laughs> so for the other one, you, so he was the bad guy in the latest, uh, um, latest X-Men movie? Did it, yeah? OK, the bad guy. I think he's like French and wear a white suit. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, he was even the invisible man in the Hollow Man, so that probably doesn't help you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, to know who he is. But basically, um, Kevin Bacon is a you know very you know prolific actor. He played in seventy-two movies, uh, approximately. So some people, what they've done is they built the what they call the Oracle of Bacon. So <laughs> yeah, what does the Oracle of Bacon does? Um, it's pretty simple. They build this website, and it's gonna connect actors to each other. So here, if I type uh, Kevin Spacey, another actor, everybody knows Kevin Spacey. Yeah, but, yeah, OK, good. You guys are pretty good, I have to admit. So, <laughs> uh, so here you go. Uh, if you type a name of another actor, you can see Kevin Spacey has a bacon number of two. Well, 
that doesn't mean much. It's just, you know, there is two movies in between Kevin Bacon. I mean, you have to go through two movies to connect Kevin Bacon and Kevin Spacey uh, <laughs> using Meg Ryan. <laughs> So, you know, it's just a fun, you know, database. Uh, what's cool, though, is they build an API. So there is, uh, <laughs> you can actually use their data. It's pretty cool. So it's just a simple API. It's a CGI script. Uh, you pass the, the name of the two actors in the URL parameter. Uh, there is also some other, thank you, <laughs> some other um, uh, parameters, you know, if it, do you want to include, like, uh, uh, movies and, and TV shows or just movies, et cetera. So what we're going to do is use that database inside AppScript. So here I've traded with a few, Tom Hanks and Robert De Niro. Uh, and you're going to see here I'm using another, you know, just, a, just an AppScript function called KB, like Kevin Bacon, of course. So let's just open the editor and, and see what it does. So it's basically simple. That's my KB function, Kevin Bacon function. What it's going to do is going to, you know, construct a URL, uh, an external URL. That's basically the, you know, the Oracle of Bacon API, which you can access here. And it's going to use the URL fetch uh, service that we have to simple, simply, you know, send the request, get the response. It's an XML response. And then we parse that response. You know, we handle some errors cannot find, if we can find the actor. And if we can't find the actor, we're just going to construct a, a message, you know, uh, blah, blah, played in blah, blah, with, etc. or was in blah, blah. So exactly what we get here. Here I tried with myself. There is no actor's name, Nicolas Garnier. Uh, and you know this guy? I, I hope he's not a porn actor or anything because I just <laughs> he's supposed to be Czech. I, I found him on the internet. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Joseph Max. Uh, do you want? Do you guys want to try with? Uh, is he known? Some people are laughing. I hope he's not like he didn't do bad stuff. Um, <laughs> so you guys want to try with other actors? Can you give me name of a Czech actor? Something I can type. What? Kevin Spacey is Czech? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, another one? A Czech actor. You guys must know one. What? Can I type it with my crappy U US keyboard? Or, OK. K A R E L Space. N? Yes. Okay. Hopefully this is going to work. Otherwise we'll have to fall back on. Ah. Okay. It's, he's not in the database, or maybe he's just spelled. Yeah. I think it's supposed to work. No. Nope. <laughs> okay. We're going to try with uh, some other actor. One more try. Who is a good actor? Somebody known. <laughs> okay, let's try with uh, you know uh, no, Arnold. They played a movie together. Yeah, but here you can't find it. So I didn't implement the full API, but uh, yeah, the API try, tries to give you like uh, correct the name. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes it has a different spelling for the name, or there is a multiple actors with the name, so it tries with one or two in parentheses at the end, and. Um, so of course I didn't implement that. When they say that, I just return an error. Uh, but basically, yeah, if you if you give another name of error here, uh, sorry, another name of an actor, Kevin Spacey again, first actor that comes to mind. Uh, here, so basically printed out in an app script. So it was just an easy way to you know introduce you to app script. Um, of course, you can use app script, and you probably should uh, use it for like you know more serious stuff. So. Uh, the second thing is, I'm going to show you how, for example, you could use AppScript to build a savings calculator. Or let's say you're in a company and you need to you know, uh, know how much money your company has, or you personally. Um, so the story is up here. So I'm French, right? So before working for Google, I had a bunch of euros, a few that I could save up. Uh, then you know, now I'm working in Switzerland, so I have Swiss francs. And of course, they gave me a few Google stock units, right? So here's my Google stock unit. Let's say they give me 10. Uh, so I want to know how rich I am, but I want to know in euros, right? Because it gets all complicated. Um, so what I'm going to do is simply, so and it's actually I do that. This is not my real spreadsheet. Um, but I use the Google Finance API to go and pull 
the you know exchange rates for you know Swiss francs to euros or US dollars to euros, and pull the value of the Google stock, uh, and then you know use that in my formulas to simply know how rich I am. So here, uh, using my app script, I created a little menu, uh, and when I click that, it runs the method, pulls the values from um, the Google Finance API here, and then you know it's very simple. I just use these values uh, to multiply by here is like. If I have 500 Swiss francs, that's four or four euros. And if I have 10 Google stock units, uh, multiplied by the Google stock value, multiplied by the exchange rate, that's 4,000 euros. So, and I can show you with the app script editor, that's very, very simple to do. It's uh, basically three lines. So within these three lines, I just get the quotes, uh, and it's very simple, inject it into the page. Uh, and while well, you did see that little menu that I've created, that's uh, very simple as well. You just create, you just put it on an on open function, uh, which is going to be triggered when you open your script, and you know that adds a menu entry inside the page. So you know that's that was kind of useful if you have to uh, go, I mean, uh, go through, I mean, manipulate many many currencies. Um, now we're going to write, uh, I'm write some code. It's going to be a bit longer, and we're going to see a problem that you could have is, for example, if your company had, had to send a weekly newsletter. So the problem with weekly newsletter is you probably would like them to be customized, right? Have the name, the first name, and the last name, or whatever other customized information inside the weekly newsletter. So we're going to try to do that using App Script. So uh, and who has a computer here? Or a working phone? And is internet working? OK, I need a few participants for this. <laughs> All right, so if you can connect to the internet, I'd like you to go to uh, this first URL here, bit uh, it's bit.ly slash weekly-newsletter-form. And you're going to subscribe to my, to my newsletter so I can spam you later. Uh, <laughs> later in that talk. So even if you have a phone and it's working, please go ahead. It's a simple form where you with like three fields. So where is that from? That's the form here. So you guys tell me it's weekly-newsletter-form. I'm going to copy-paste it. There you go. bit.ly-weekly-newsletter-form. So if you have your computer open, please sign up. And this is the, you know, the spreadsheet that's behind it. So I see a few people signed up already. No people is trying, nobody is trying to do SQL injection yet. <laughs> so. <laughs> it's pretty nice of you. <laughs> ah, no, that's good. <laughs> All right. So I give you a few seconds. So, uh, so probably for for the one that don't know uh, how we do that, it's very simple, right? You can create a form that's attached to a Google spreadsheet. It simply creates a form like that. That you know you have a form editor, and then all the data get filled into that spreadsheet. So what I want to do is actually. Um, create a newsletter inside Google Docs, type a newsletter, then I want to mod replace a few placeholder in that Google Docs. For example, using the first, I mean, filling up the first name so the newsletter is, um, is actually customized. And then I want to send that newsletter by email, but in the preferred language, uh, in the language that the people selected. So I'm going to use the Translate API as well to uh, translate the email. So let's go back to the code now. You guys all had time to sign up. So how we're going to do that, uh, it's basically going to be four methods. Uh, the first method is going to get the latest newsletter. How it's going to work is, let me go back here. Sorry, in here. Here I created a newsletter inside Google Docs. And I simply called it weekly newsletter number one. Uh, my first script is simply, simply going to go through my good documents and find the latest one. So yeah, if I have weekly newsletter number two, number three, it's simply going to pick this one, right? Uh, so here I have only one, so it's going to find it pretty easily. And then my newsletter, it's a really simple message. It's going to say, dear first name that I'm going to replace. Uh, this is our first newsletter, just say hello, etc. So this code, it's very simple. It, it's going to... I use the Google Docs API inside App Script to simply uh, search for a weekly newsletter number. And then I just parse them and find the one with the highest number. Pretty easy stuff. Uh, besides this, the users with this method here, it's you know regular JavaScript. Then uh, I have a second method. Uh, what it's going to do, it's going to go through uh, the entries in the spreadsheet 
and you know, extract the first name, the email, the language. So it's simply reading from the spreadsheet uh, that you guys filled up by, um, uh, you know, by subscribing to my newsletter. And it's going to pass that to a method that's going to send the actual newsletter. So what does it do? It's simply getting the title. It's going to be the title of the email. Uh, it's it's going to get the you know Google Docs template as HTML. So I'm going to show you how I, I do this trick. Um, and then it's going to uh, first uh, rep I mean trans replace the um, uh, or where is it? Now here I first translate it. You know if the language is different than English because I've written my newsletter in English. Uh, I translate it using the Google Translate API. Here again it's very easy to do. It's simple. It's one call, right? Language app that translate. You can specify its HTML so it doesn't screw up the HTML syntax. Um, and I also translate the title, right? And then I, I send that email. Uh, oh yeah, I do the actual, um, I do the replacement for the, for, for the placeholders, like the, the first name, for example. I do it in this method. This way I pass the first name. And this is the method. So how I do get the Google Docs uh, as HTML, that can only work if your Google Docs is set to public. Uh, you can actually access this URL. So I use the URL fetch API to, you know, I construct this URL here. It's slash download, documents, export, and you can uh, select an export format HTML. You can also get PDF. But for PDF, we have a, um, an API, something built in inside AppScript, where you can just get as PDF, and you get the document in PDF. You don't have to use this, uh, construct this URL, and, and which is a bit weird, and only works for public documents. But to get HTML, I have to do that. And uh, because I want to send an email with the body of the email being the actual newsletter, so I need HTML. Uh, otherwise, I could just send a PDF as, a, as an attachment as well. So now let's try it out. Let's see who signed up first, a bunch of people. All right, some people chose check, so you're probably going to get a really funny translation, but uh, yeah, let's hope for the best. So I created this little menu, send the newsletter, 17 people have signed up. OK. It's running, running, running. So in the background, it's simply uh, you know uh, translating this, this uh, weekly newsletter and sending it out uh, using the Gmail API. OK, it finished. So now let's. Hopefully it worked. Did anybody get an email? So I got my uh, newsletter in French. So yes. Anybody got the newsletter as well? Yeah. In Czech or? Czech. Yeah. Quite, quite good, really. I uh, see. So, <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm quite surprised. Uh, I couldn't really, you know, guess what it was saying in Czech. But uh, <laughs> so in French, it's actually not bad as well. So uh, OK, let's go back. So now you've seen that was a really easy way to you know use multiple APIs uh, to build you know a, a quick uh, newsletter sender, and actually this doesn't take too long to build. That's you can you know come up with this code in a few hours, uh, no problem. You don't have to set up authentication and you know complicated stuff. Uh, simply you know build your code in the in the editor. Oh, I wanted to show you something else in the editor as well. Uh, choo -choo -choo. I'm sorry, tools, app script editor. Uh, this is the actual code. So the editor also comes with a, uh, it has autocomplete inside, so it's a pretty cool editor. Uh, so whenever you type uh, some app script API, uh, you know, entry point like doclist, uh, you can autocomplete to find, you know, all you can do with this. It's pretty simple. You can also run the methods and um, uh, in debug mode and add breakpoints, uh, and you know inspect your your code and the values of um, uh, of the um, of the variables. So uh, it's not you know a complete editor. It's not going to be like Eclipse yet, but uh, it's pretty decent to get you started, and you know it's going to improve over time. So not too bad. So one last example, um, actually two last example. Forgot to change that slide. <laughs> uh, it's I'm simply going to you know use the um, uh, the graph uh, the graph API to build a stock visualizer. So it's going to use Google Charts API and Google um, uh, Google Finance historic data to build you know uh, charts of stock values. And I'm going to publish that as a standalone service since it's the UI. 
up. Where is it here? So what I've done is, um, so I didn't come up with like a complicated uh, user interface. I'm just using the spreadsheet to uh, have a few of the uh, of the stock, uh, sorry, the stock codes I want to see in my graph, and I put a start date and an end date. And what the script is going to do is simply going to extract these values, and use the finance API historic data uh, to pull all the values of the stock and uh, graph it. So here it is. Let me refresh it to prove you it actually works. <laughs> so uh, how you can do that? You see it's not inside AppScript. It's not inside a spreadsheet. It's just standalone. So when you're inside AppScript, what you can do is, sorry, let me open the editor again. What you can do is publish uh, one, some of your methods, I mean publish your script as a standalone service. Uh, here you go, in share, publish as a service. You just have to go there and, you know, and uh, approve some of the some of the stuff here, allow anonymous access or not, and then you'll get this URL. And this URL is a standalone URL. What your what your app script needs to do is have a do get method here, and this new do get method needs to um, uh, sorry needs to return a um, a UI app. So it's our UI services. Uh, you can, you know, as I told you already, uh, you can use, there's a WYSIWYG editor and you can also use um, a bunch of our APIs to build up UIs, user interface programmatically. And here it's a pretty simple user interface, it's just a chart that I return. Uh, and you can embed that inside Gadget, you can put that inside, uh, inside, Gad yeah, inside Gadget, inside the Google, um, uh, Google Sites, uh, that kind of things. Yep. And one of the latest demo I wanted to show you, it's um, a Gmail snooze. Who have actually heard of the Gmail snooze before? That was a really popular blog post. Okay, good. So, uh, yeah, one of our most popular blog posts is uh, using AppScript, we build a way to snooze your email. Uh, basically, the idea behind it is uh, you would get an email inside Gmail and um, you know it's an important email, but you're busy so, or you're in vacation. Uh, you want it to pop up again, like two or three days later, for example, right? So what you're going to do is this. Let me go inside Gmail. I'm going to go inside Gmail, and and for the script to work, you've created this uh, this snooze one day, two day, three day, four day. Um, yeah. So what you do with this is you simply uh, take a um, take one of your emails and drop it inside that folder. So, for example, I want to, uh, uh, that newsletter, let's say it's really, really important to me, and I, I want to read it, but in two days, because I'm in vacation two days. So I could simply drop it inside that folder. So it's here, inside that folder. And what I've created is uh, a Gmail snooze script. What it's going to do is I'm going to set it up to run every 24 hours and move these emails up uh, one label, right? So. It's going to go on the, if it's in the two days label, it's going to go every day, for example, at midnight, it's going to go into the one day label. And so when it's in the one day label, it just pops up into my inbox, like an unread email, for example. Um, so let me just run that for you. Uh, or first, let me show you how you can trigger that every day. So for app, using app script, you can trigger some of your app script uh, in a time driven manner. So you can create triggers. And here I've created a trigger that's running every day you know, between midnight and 1 a.m. and uh, executing this method called move snooze, which is going to go through my emails and move them you know, one label. So instead, I'm just going to run it manually, move snooze. Here, you can do that using this. So it's taking the time it's taking. <laughs> Here you go. Let's hope that worked. <laughs> Here, so I click the, you can see on the snooze two days, the email is gone and got moved to the snooze one day. And if I run it one more time, here you go. Now here, so the email popped back up in my inbox as an unread email. Um, so this is basically a way for you to build features that are missing. So the snooze email feature is missing inside Gmail. You wanted it so bad that you've built your own script. Uh, you know, so we're just going to provide you these, these these tools to like automate your own data, automate your own flow, build you know custom features 
uh, for you. For example, you could build a feature that, oh, you just give, give the domain of a, of a uh, I mean, a, a domain, and you want to email, mass email, all these people which are inside your Google contacts. Um, so if some of our salespeople ask for this, for example. So we can really, really easily build a script that does that, right? Uh, you know, you could, we could create an email uh, inside Google Docs, and just by typing the name of the domain, they're going to mass email this this email to all their customers, uh, for example, Genentech or, uh, or Jaguar.com, that kind of things. Um, let me go back to the presentation. And that's actually it for me. Uh, now, please welcome Ivan Cotil from uh, AppSatori, uh, which is going to give a quick intro of his company and, uh, and uh, also some of the solutions they'll build using AppScript. Thank you. Uh, you can use this one if you want. Okay. Working. Ahoj. So thank you, Ivan. Takže já, já budu mluvit česky, takže dobrý den a rád bych vás přivítal na dnešní... Oh, and he speaks Czech. Je. Uh, takže uh, v následujících zhruba deseti minutách se podíváme na nějaké řešení, které jsme vlastně, uh, který vytváříme u nás v Absatory. Já se jmenuji Ivan Kutil, jak už to bylo zmíněno na Twitteru, když tak, uh, co dělás. Na úvod bych rád zmínil to, co děláme. My jsme vlastně firma, která se orientuje na Google technologie pro firmní využití. Zaměřujeme se především na malé a střední podniky. Tady vidíte, v čím, čím se vlastně zaobíráme. Děláme consulting, zavádíme Google Apps, zároveň provádíme nějaké školení. A mimo, to, mimo jiné, právě proto jsme tady se zabýváme vývojem nějaký způsobem integrací. Tam vidíte nějaký cloud věcí, čím je to větší, tím je to pro nás zajímavější. Vidíte, že upscripty jsou docela vysoko, protože my si myslíme, že upscripty mají budoucnost a v následujících vlastně ukázce si ukážeme, co vlastně si vy sami můžete nějakým způsobem realizovat. Google upscripty jsou pro mě něco, jako je švýcarsk, švý, švýcarský nožík, protože to je vlastně způsob, jak já můžu využít těch výhod, který Google nabízí v nějakém uceleném balíku, v nějakém uceleném řešení. To, co jsem tam já vybral, je jenom nástroj toho, co mě ulehčuje denodenně práci, když nějakým způsobem integruji nebo automatizuji práci ve sprečítech. To, co je super, je, že v tuhle tu chvíli je tam nějakých 15 předpřipravených API, Google API, se kterými vy můžete pracovat. To znamená, že vy si nic nemusíte programovat, jsou to všechno JavaScript objekty, se kterými vy snadno můžete pracovat a do budoucna se určitě budou rozšiřovat, to znamená, že tam budou další a další. Co to je další jako super věc, kterou tam já oceňuji, je to, že to celé programovací prostředí je v cloudu, to znamená, že vy vidíte, vy, vy vidíte jak to ukazoval Nikolas, přímo v tom rozhraní, navíc tam máte debugger, vlastně vám to napovídá ty funkce, to, co se tam přidalo třeba nedávno, tuším, že to je měsíc zpátky, je, že vám to dokonce vra, o, o, napovídá i Java, javascriptový funkce. To znamená, že když máte například objekt a je to string, tak vám to automaticky napoví, že, s tím můžete, že to můžete splitnout, rozdělit, že, s tím můžete, že to můžete substringnout a tak dále. To znamená, že to má plno výhod pro toho programátora. Má to nějaký způsobem triggery. To znamená, že vy si můžete nastavit, že na nějakou událost se má něco vykonat. Těch možností je tam plno. Ty s funkce se můžou spouštět po odeslání nějakého e-mailu, jak jsme viděli v ukázce. Odeslal se e-mail, vykonala se nějaká funkce, která může něco zpracovávat. Dále tam jsou události na on-edit. To znamená, že vy, když například editujete nějakou buňku, například půjdete do A2, tam něco začnete editovat, tak si odchytíte tuhle tu událost a můžete s tím pracovat dál. Říci, pokud je to tahle ta buňka, můžu vzít hodnoty a nějakým způsobem s nimi opět pracovat dál. To, co je vlastně další tou super věcí, je, že vy si můžete nastavit automatické vykonávání skriptu. Vy si tam můžete dát, že chcete, aby se ten skript, aby se ta funkce vykonávala například jednou týdně, aby se vykonalo něco, co se má udělat v pondělí. Případně si to můžete nastavit, aby se to konalo každý den, můžete si to nastavit. Ten nejmenší limit je tam zhruba jedna minuta, takže můžete si nastavit něco, co se má vykonávat nebo zjišťovat každou minutu. Má to nějakým způsobem napojení, konektory, JDBC jsem tam zmínil, má to spreadsheet a sites integraci, to znamená, že to nemusíte vyvíjet jenom ve spreadsheetech, ale můžete to vyvíjet i ve webech Google. A poslední věcí je, že to má 
vlastně builder na vytváření toho uživatelského rozhraní. To znamená, vy nemusíte bušit kód, je tam vlastně nějaký jednoduchý drag and drop, kde vy si nastavíte jednoduchý ty panely, řeknete si, že to, že ta, že to rozhraní má vypadat takhle, dáte tam, že tam má být jeden input box, že tam má být nějaký tlačítko, na to nastavíte nějaký ty funkce a vlastně tu, tu finální aplikaci máte vytvořenou velmi rychle. To, co si ukážeme tady na našem uh, příkladě, který my jsme vytvořili a je to uh, jednoduchý uh, fakturační systém. Uh, funguje to vlastně tak, že uh, my to používáme interně, když uh, fakturujeme, když vystavujeme faktury, uh, přijde k nám uh, nějakým způsobem potřebujeme vystavit fakturu. První je, že potřebujeme zjistit nějaké informace o té firmě. Uh, tak uh, tam máme vlastně udělaný, uh, že tam je input box, do kterého se zapíše nějakým způsobem jméno té firmy a na pozadí se provede request, jako to bylo ukázáno v tom Oracle of Bacon. V našem případě se to dělá na ARES, což je databáze všech českých subjektů, která podporuje XML. -ko. Tady to XML -ko se nám vrátí, my si z toho rozparsujeme to, co potřebujeme. Je to ICHO, DIG a adresa, se kterou potom pracujeme dál v té faktuře. Tu fakturu máme nadefinovanou v templateu, je to vlastně Google dokument, kde máme daný rozvržení, že to má být naše logo, že kde mají být ty jednotlivé řádky, položky té faktury, kde má být adresa. A tady to vlastně všechno se smíchá s tím, že my tam ještě zadáváme, do kdy se má ta, kdy ta faktura je vystavená, do kdy je splatnost, jaké je číslo faktury. A tady to vlastně po, po tomhle vykonání, to je v té krabičce, se vytvoří nějakým způsobem soubor, který se automaticky ještě uloží do našeho online uložiště ve dvou kopií. Jednou to je, jednou to je normální dokument, kdybychom to chtěli zpětně někdy editovat, a potom to je rovnou PDF. -ko. To PDF z toho děláme proto, abychom do budoucna to mohli rozšiřovat, protože těch možností je tam plno a my jsme třeba plánovali, že by se rovnou to PDF buď nazdílelo klientovi, nebo se mu to rovnou odeslalo. Ale ve směs, že většinou ty, většinou ty e-maily nebo faktury řešíme individuálně, tak jsme to zatím neimplementovali, ale ta možnost toho tam je. To znamená, že mám PDF a s tím můžu pracovat dál, můžu ho někomu poslat nebo to někam nazdílet, stáhnout, uložit. Takže to by bylo tady k tomu nákresu. Já jsem připravil video toho, jak to vypadá, protože když je živá ukázka, tak co se má pokazit, to se pokazí. Takže já to otevřu a budu to komentovat. Takže já to takhle stopnu. Takže takhle vypadá ten náš spreadsheet kdy my tam máme vlastně ty dva šíty, jedno jsou faktury, jedno jsou klienti. V, tom, v těch klientech máme ty jednotlivé firmy a k tomu při, po, konkrétní údaje. Klikneme si na přidat firmu a napíšeme e, nějaké jméno. Takže napíšeme například firmu Invite. Náhodně. Tam vidíte vpravo je nějaký způsobem informace o tom, co se děje. Tady nám to vrátilo ty data, které si rovnou můžeme uložit. Po uložení se nám to vlastně uloží rovnou jako, jako nový řádek tabulky, kde tam máme ičo, zároveň zjišťujeme, jestli jsou pláci daně, pokud jo, tak k tomu dáme při, přirazující dyč. Teďka pokud bychom chtěli vystavit novou fakturu, tak vidíte, že máme v menu nová faktura. Pokud na to vlastně klikneme, zobrazí se nám menu, které, jsme, které jsem dělal v tom GUI Builderu. Číslo faktury to je inkrementální plus jedna, datum se bere dnešní, aktuální, dá se změnit. Načtu tu firmu, pokud bych chtěl, je to normálně to vpravo je editovatelný box, takže to můžu změnit, v tom není problém. Potom zadám, o co by se mělo jednat. V tomhle případě tam zadám nějaké jméno, množství, typ, případně i nějakou cenu a dám potom jenom vystavit. Tady vlastně potom tam zase vpravo vidíte ten, říká se tomu toast, a je to vlastně indikátor toho stavu, co se s tím skriptem děje. To znamená, že vy můžete informovat uživatel o tom, že ten soubor byl uložený, že se to udělalo PDF, že, že se to někam uložilo. Tady vidíte, že už je nová faktura vystavená. K tomu máme rovnou link na ten dokument v tom cloudu, který si rovnou můžeme otevřít. A tady vlastně uh, my to rovnou můžeme buď nazdílet nebo stáhnout. Tady vidíte, to je vlastně šablona, která byla vytvořena v Google dokumentech, kdy tam jsou ty základní položky jako variabilní symbol, jako je číslo faktury, uh, naše logo. To bylo udělané tady v, to, v těch dokumentech, kdy vidíte, kdy tam jsou ty 
chlupatý závorky a number, kdy to se nahrazuje tou proměnou, kterou my potřebujeme. Vidíte, že si vlastně my si to můžeme měnit libovolně. My bychom chtěli změnit logo nebo chtěli bychom to celý přeorganizovat, tak se na to neváže. Navíc se nám to uložilo do těch Google dokumentů, takže my s tím dále můžeme pracovat. Navíc, co jsem ještě nezmínil, my si vytvoříme novou událost v kalendáři, kdy má být splatnost. To znamená, my můžeme kontrolovat, že za 14 dnů by ta faktura měla být zaplacená a těch možností té integrace nebo těch možností je tam plno, protože my k té události například v tom kalendáři můžeme přidávat například upozornění, protože Google, Google kalendář umožňuje v základu SMS upozornění nebo e-mailové upozornění. Přes Google Apps Script já jsem schopen nastavit, nastavit k té události SMS upozornění, takže vlastně jenom přidáním jednoho kódu já mám SMS upozornění na, na to, že by měla být splatná nějakým způsobem uh, faktura. Takže to by bylo tady k tom demo. Já bych ještě udělal nějaký summary, případně bychom se mohli ještě podívat na ten online dokument, ale to, o čem jsou ty Apps Scripty. Uh, takže určitě je to JavaScript, nemusíte se učit nic nového. Uh, ten JavaScript není těžký, nejsou tam nějaké speciální knihovny, nějaké objekty, které byste museli tahat, všechno, to je vlastně, všechno vám to napovídá. Je to takové lepší Excelovské makro, akorát je to v cloudu. Dokáže se to šahat na nějaké online data, které jsou někde, se kterými vy můžete nějakým způsobem dál pracovat. Uh, dále jsem to schrnul, že to je small, smart and useful, uh, jednoduché. Je, je to malé, chytré a jednoduché. Je to přesně jako švýcarský nožík. To znamená, že je to dobré na to, abyste si nějakým způsobem zautomatizovali vaši práci, když něco někam přepisujete, posíláte, ale zároveň to není vhodné na to, abyste nad tím budovali nějaký velký robustní systém. Je to něco, jako kdybyste chtěli například sekat nějaký strom a měli byste jenom malý na, malý na to nožík. Pokud je to nějaká velká robustní aplikace, použijte jiné technologie, které Google nabízí, například App Engine, případně GVT. Pokud to je něco, co nějakým způsobem má zjednodušovat tu práci, má to vlastně být rychlé, aby si to mohl vyvinout jakoby kdokoliv, tak právě na to jsou ty Google Apps Scripty. To, co je ta třetí výhoda, která je tam zmíněna, je, že to má plno Google, Google vlastně aplikačních rozhraní a já si myslím, že další budou přibývat. To, co my plánujeme, nebo to, co bychom chtěli tady do toho našeho systému dodat, je nějakým způsobem charts, abychom mohli vyhodnocovat, kolik faktur bylo kdy vystaveno, za jakou částku, případně jak to probíhá jejich placení. Rádi bychom integrovali s Gmailem. Uh, vy jste schopni z Google Apps Scriptu nejen posílat maily, ale jste schopni si stahovat i poštu, která ta je třeba v inboxu nebo ve speciálních štících. Tohle je úplně ideální na způsob, jak vy to můžete napojit na vaše, uh, na vaše uh, uh, internetové bankovnictví. Pokud je to banka, která vám posílá každý den, když se provede výběr, uh, výdaj nebo při, uh, peněz na účtě, tak vy s tím můžete nějakým způsobem pracovat. Přijde vám e-mail o tom, že vám přišlo nějakých x tisíc za zaplacenou fakturu. Vy jste schopni z Upscriptu každý den se připojit do svého Gmailu, zjistit, jestli tam je od vaší banky nějaký nový e-mail nepřečtený. Pokud je, vy jste schopni si přičíst ten text toho e-mailu, zjistit, co to je vlastně za firmu, podle číslo faktury, jste schopni zjistit částku a jste schopni zjistit to automaticky zapracovat do toho, do toho systému, případně poslat zase nějakou zprávu, e-mail o tom, že to bylo v pořádku zaplaceno, ať už vám nebo vašim klientům. Chtěli bychom integrovat tasks, pokud faktura nebude zaplacená, chtěli bychom tam dát, aby se vytvořil task někomu, aby se podíval na tu fakturu, proč nebyla zaplacená a co, jak by s tou fakturou a s tím měl dál pracovat. O čem ještě nějakým způsobem uvažujeme a není jisté, jestli to použijeme, nějakým způsobem prediction API. Pokud bychom těch dat měli hodně, tak bychom na základě nějakých základních údajů, jako je výše částky, typ firmy a další údaje, mohli zjistit o tom, jaká je vlastně solventnost té firmy, jaká, jestli ta jejich faktura bude zaplacená včas, protože budeme mít o těch firmách nějaké, nějakým způsobem historii a budeme vědět, že pokud ta firma v 80 případech zaplatila a ve 20 ne, tak jsme s tím prediction API například schopni vyhodnotit, do jakým způsobem by si ten vystavující na to měl dát pozor. Může ho to nějakým způsobem jenom indikovat. Té, ty možnosti tam jsou vlastně velký a nabízí se, záleží na těch, na těch uživatelích. Takže to by bylo asi k těm upscriptům. Tady asi děkuji za pozornost. Určitě je to 
řešení pro ně, ně, nějakým způsobem člověka, který je jako megaiver, který si s tím chce hrát. Pokud byste chtěli vědět víc, můžete si mě odchytnout tady, na, buď mi napsat na e-mail, případně mě followovat na Twitteru, případně napsat na Google+. To by bylo asi za mě všechno, pokud máte nějaké otázky, rád odpovídím. Děkuji. Yeah, you can stay. Yeah, thanks, Ivan. That was really cool. You know, uh, I mean, uh, as far as uh, billing and uh, invoicing can be cool, yeah. that was <laughs> no, that was a really good use case for AppScript, actually. Um, so the talk is almost done. Uh, here is a list of resources about AppScript. Uh, I promised uh, my team that I would show you the AppScript documentation because so I have to. I'm going to click on that link. So this is the AppScript documentation. You just for search for Google AppScript. You should end up here. Um, if you do go to Docs, you can find on the left here the list of all the services, all the APIs that we support. Uh, it's usually pretty st straightforward to use. There's also a really good user guide you know, to get you started uh, with user interface or, or writing your first script. Um, and there's one really, really interesting section as well. It's the articles section. Uh, you can find really great use case here. For example, there is uh, one of my favorite one is the Twitter approval manager. It's, uh, for example, in Google we send you know official tweets using our official accounts. Um, we could use that Twitter approval manager to say, for example, I could say, oh, I want to send out this tweet, and it would send an email to my manager, uh, and my manager will have to click on the link to approve my tweet or not. And um, this uh, this demo here, I mean this uh, article here. It's pretty cool. It uses uh, the Oath One integration that we have with URL Fetch to authorize against the Twitter API to post your tweet later. So it's also a showcase of how you can use Oath One and access Oath One protected uh, APIs uh, uh, with AppScript. So pretty cool, actually. <coughs> uh, also, please uh, follow our blogs, Google Apps Developer Blog. There's uh, you know lots of technical articles. Uh, you know we also announce all the new features that we launched on that blog. So please follow. It's Google Apps Developer Blog. Blogspot. Com. And that's it. Thank you very much. Um, and I'll be happy to take some questions. Yeah. And uh, thank you. And we can also take questions in Czech, since. Uh, what is it? Is I'd like to ask you about the yes. stability of the platform. Like how do you solve when there is some bug or something? How do you communicate with Google? Or uh, yeah, so it's actually uh, you search for our uh, public issue tracker and our forum. Uh, the public issue tracker is where you can actually file bugs. Uh, so there's a Google Apps public issue tracker. You file a bug, and, and we read through it. And we communicate there. The probably the most effective way right now is still the forum. Uh, we have so I go on. The, so I take care of, for example, the tasks forum and the app script forum every day. So I go there and start answering questions of people. Uh, we have uh, engineers taking care of each of the forums. Uh, it's you know part of our job to go there and uh, you know read. You know people are people are having issues. Is there an outage? Is there a bug? And report that to the engineering team and the product team. Uh, We f we fixed the bug for you uh, yesterday, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually got fixed uh, already, but. Určitě se to jako bys lepšuje, takže. What was he saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's when he's gonna. Yeah, it's getting better. No, it's when he's gonna make fun of me when I don't understand. Uh, <laughs> Jako my si nad tím děláme projekty pro naše zákazníky a velký problém s tím nejsou, no, takže jako no problém. Hmm. So it, it also depends of many, uh, so it uses, it's a platform, right, and uses many, many APIs. Uh, sometimes it happens that also one particular API is not working. Sometimes it's the app script team fault. Uh, sometimes it's this API that's, that's down or that having some issues communicating internally. Uh, so there's many, many dependencies, and it's true that sometimes uh, some stuff fail. So we try to fix it as soon as possible, as soon as we hear about it. But, uh, you know, there's always a delay sometimes. Yes? Yeah, just a question. Uh, one, one, one question. Stability second uh, is, as, uh, is a security. What is the reaction of customers that they will have stored uh, the financial data? Yeah, so this is a blast from the company uh, in a public cloud. In a public? Public cloud. Uh, public cloud, yeah. So it's it's actually a question, yeah. And it's not only Google Apps related, right? Your question. It's uh, we get that questions all the time for Google Apps in general. So Google Apps is hosted on, on Google servers. 
Uh, some are in the US, some are, are in Europe. You don't know where your data is. Um, for, um, for Google Apps in particular, if your company signed up for Google Apps, we, uh, we do respect, so I don't have the name, I think it's ACS 40 or something. I mean, there is, um, there is two, um, uh, uh, how is it called, two certifications that we passed. It's, uh, you know, we get audits from external company checking our code. Uh, so this certification says basically that we're not going to use uh, enterprise data uh, for any purpose. I mean, besides, you know, debugging and making sure the platform runs. Uh, but we don't use that data. We don't sell it. Um, that kind of things. You have to check into more. I can give you the name of the two speci uh, specifications that we have. Just after this talk, it's, it's one of, in one of my emails and one of my other presentations. Uh, I just don't have it uh, like that. It's related, for example, uh, to the legacy related to the countries. For example, Switzerland has very strict legacy concerning uh, input output the, the data from the, from the countries. So this yeah. is a and and so we, we do that some, sometimes. For example, some US government agencies uh, use Google Apps. And for them, we had to um, you know, implement specific uh, things. Like uh, we have to make sure their data stays in the US. Uh, it's actually in, a, in our data center. It's actually in the part of the data center that's behind a grid uh, with a guard. And it's encrypted in a different manner than the rest. Um, so we did that for them. But that was a huge contract, like hundreds of thousands of seats, uh, which they would pay for. Um, and for each specific country, well, the problem is we don't even have a data center in each country. So we can't offer that right now, for example, for Switzerland. Um, so this country right now, some government agencies can't do that, or banks, or, or that kind of things. Uh, you know, it's something we'll work on in the future, but definitely, you know, we rely on, we have so many data centers, and uh, the default way is that the data is duplicated a bit everywhere. Um, and we are, yeah, we can make efforts for big contracts or government agencies, but you know, if we have a data center already, it's very unlikely we're going to build a data center for uh, for one contract. I mean, we'd like to, but uh, <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Actually, do you have any ambition to create some really rich application platform on top of these Google apps? Um, you mean a development environment or? Um, Yes, I mean, like, really huge application, a lot of dialogues and forms. And yeah. Um, like, for example, an eclipse on the web or uh, an online eclipse. <laughs> I would like that personally. <laughs> no, um, actually, if I want to create some, some really great application, yeah. I have to use the app, the app engine. Mm -hmm. and yes. Any ambition to, to be the second app engine? <laughs> Well, we already have App Engine. That's us too. <laughs> but um, uh, you mean like App Script, for example, using App Script to build. So right now, if you've seen, you can build your own custom user interface and publish that as a service. Um, though I wouldn't say it's made for um, you know uh, opening it to the world and to like hundreds of thousands of people. It's more made to for now to be uh, you know uh, shared inside a, a company, inside you know small circles, or automate your own flow. Um, I wouldn't say it's made to like for now to build that. For now, we're uh, we're relying entirely on App Engine for I mean mostly for big uh, scalable apps uh, for you know platform as a service as a platform as a service. But you know we will see how App Script evolves uh, in the future. But for now, I think the the um, the target is more to you know create new functionalities and open new I mean integrate with new APIs, and then we'll see about the scalability and. Um, you know, making real standalone apps um, after. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yes? And are those features like AppScript also available on Android devices? Um, well, uh, so the thing is the Google Docs uh, and the Google Spreadsheet on mobile devices is pretty limited. I don't know if you tried opening a, a spreadsheet on your mobile device. It's, it's a bit different, the UI. <coughs> um, so. Uh, it it might work, for example, if you have like background processing, uh, it's going to update the, the cells the same way. Uh, I don't think you can open the editor, except it would just, I mean, it would open it, but just like it would open it on any computer. There's not like a Android specific, for example, editor for the code. Um, uh, have you tried <laughs> on your Android device? 
Uh, yes, it's work on the Android when you uh, public the, this function to the world, so you yeah. can access this uh, this website with uh, GUI or uh, GUI. Uh, when you publish you, as a service, yeah. 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 When you publish as a service. But, but the, like the application, the billing system you showed us, would that work on Android device? Like on mm, uh, I'm not sure if the menu pops up, uh, you know. Uh, when I uh, the GUI with uh, invoice, when I uh, insert to the uh, Google site, it works. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but, uh, I assume the question is about using native Google Docs application, not using the website. I think the. Um, the native Google Docs that we have on Android is not really native. <laughs> I don't know if you if you've seen it, if you open a document, it's actually it's an embedded web page inside Google the Google Docs uh, app, native app. So right now it's just realized it's just like when you would open it from the browser. So <laughs> yep. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so when we talk about the uh, Google Sites, it's of course from from a spreadsheet, from a from an app script, you can access the Google Sites API, so you can you know modify the content, etc. And uh, the other thing we talked about inside Google Apps, you can sorry inside Google Sites, you can uh, embed an app script. You know, if, but it's in the case where you publish your app script as a service, uh, you can just embed it. It's just going to embed it in the gadget. So. Mm -hmm. then, uh, um, where is it from? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. You can see actually I have so one of the demos, this one. Uh, it serves from that URL. It's docs.google.com slash macros. Uh, this is where the, um, you know, uh, when your script publishes as a service runs. And you can, of course, you know, embed it in, in a Google Sites, but it's basically going to be a gadget that embeds this uh, inside your Google Sites. Uh, to that URL, no, you would have to, no, no, no. But but your script here could uh, could access the data on your spreadsheet, for example. So what if like, I don't well, what you so what you could do here is instead, uh, well, what you could build, for example, an, an interface that has like input fields here, and people could just modify themselves. But um, oh, I see what you mean. You'd like to, yeah, host multiple versions of it with like different parameters in the URL, for example. Yeah, you can't. Um, no, right now the script won't be able to access your all parameters. Um, I mean, I don't think so. I've never tried, but uh, I don't see any ways to where you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yes. Uh, Mm, not now. <laughs> no, yeah, not right now. Yeah, you have to copy paste it. Uh, if you copy the spreadsheet, the function is going to get copied with it. But yeah, right now there is no way to to share uh, functions. That's that's one of the things the team is working on, uh, sharing um, sharing or or injecting uh, functions that you have to another spreadsheet. Yeah, 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 and, and sharing that even across your organization and that kind of things. So, yep, yes. <laughs> well, you know what? If you file a feature request, I promise to uh, plus one it. <laughs> no, yeah. You, what you should do is definitely go to the, our uh, public issue tracker, file a feature request, so that we get the um, I get the email and the feature request is public. People can start it basically uh, if if more people want it, and I can go to my team. I mean the engineering team and the product manager and tell them, listen, this feature it makes sense. Uh, and you know, x many people want it, so when build it? And yep. So I hope uh, you'll do that. <laughs> Feature request. Yeah. Any other questions? Mm. Ah, no, he's just scratching his back. <laughs> All right. Um, yes. Yeah. Basically, inside a gadget, um, you well, or inside an iframe, you could take take that in and embed that inside an iframe yourself. Yeah. All right. Um, I guess that's it. I'll be available uh, after that for uh, you know if you if you have any questions, of course. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.